Hello and welcome to my class of managerial economics. Students in this class will be talking about the monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is another type of imperfect competition which lies between monopoly and perfect competition. Monopolistic competition as the name suggests it is combination of two words monopoly plus competition monopolistic competition it means it is having features of both monopoly as well as the perfect competition. So, at the end of this lecture we will also talk about how it resembles perfect competition and the per, uh, monopoly. Let us start the concept going with the features pricing under monopolistic competition and then we will talk about the product differentiation. So, what a product differentiation means this we will discuss in the coming slide, but let us first talk about the monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is a market structure, it, it is a market structure where there are large number of sellers are selling differentiated product. It is a market structure where the large number of sellers, large number means they are such large that they are independent in their decision making, they are not dependent in their decision making because they are such large, but that large is lesser than the perfect competition. In the perfect competition it was very large, but here it is only large. It may be the number if we say can, it can be 50 to 100 players in the market. For example, there is retail industry, there is uh, there are uh, advisors, there are uh, like if we say consultants that there are large number of consultants in the market, there are large number of retailers in the market, they are such large like they lies from 50 to 100 and they are not dependent in their decision making, they are independent in their decision making. It is the combination of perfect competition and the monopoly. It has elements from both the competition, why? Because there are many sellers and there are many buyers, but when the product is differentiated this differentiation gives the competitive advantage to the seller that he can differentiate his product and he can charge extra price for that. Like if I am selling a product and I am giving something extra to my consumer, so I can charge a premium for that, that, that is called as the price control. So, because of that feature of product differentiation the seller is able to charge a higher price than its rivals or its peers. That is why it is a prominent feature of the monopolistic competition that there is the product differentiation. This is the major difference between perfect competition and monopolistic competition that here the product is differentiated earlier the product was homogeneous. And it is similar to monopoly again because of the same feature that the product is differentiated in some sense may be real or imaginary and that is why the seller is able to charge extra price from the consumer. So, let us talk about the features. The prominent features are that there are large number of buyers and sellers. Buyers are large and sellers are also very large in the market. This, that industry which is having this kind of feature would be an example of the monopolistic competition. The product is differentiated as I have said the product is differentiated, differentiated means that the buyers are able to distinguish one seller product from another seller product, maybe because of its packaging, maybe because of its branding, because of its price because of its uh, appeal to the consumer, because of its advertising policy or anything related to the product or the service. There is unrestricted entry and exit, it means there are no barriers to entry and exit. New players can easily enter the industry and exist existing player can easily leave the industry. There is less than perfect knowledge, there is knowledge among the buyers and sellers, but it is less than perfect. Elastic demand curve, the demand curve is elastic not perfectly elastic, it is elastic, it is greater than 1 that is why the demand curve is more flatter, it is having higher slope. 
why because there are large number of rivals in the industry because these are large number of rivals in the industry. So, it means that there are substitutes available there are large number of substitutes available in the product uh, of the product. If we see toothpaste uh, like uh, or we can say any product like retailer if we see they are selling different products they are they are charging different uh, prices for their services, but uh, still we have options to go for. So, as the number of sellers in the industry increases the uh, rivalry increases and the demand curve will become more elastic. Because of the differentiation seller can control the price he can charge extra price. There are less government intervention we can we cannot say that there is no government intervention there is government intervention may be in the form of legal policies or some restrictions on the entry and exit, but we will say it is very less it is very very less than profit maximization of the seller in the monopolistic competition. So, that profit maximization for the monopolistic seller again depends on his cost structure again the demand curve the average revenue the marginal revenue average cost and the uh, the the level of differentiation which he is offering to the consumers. So, the rule of finding out the maximum profit or the optimum output would remain the same. So, what we have discussed in the earlier class related to profit maximization that M R should equals to M C and M C should intersect M R from below this we have to remember in this topic as well. So, here each seller is having its own set of cost and revenue curves and the price determination is based on the rule of MR and MC where MR is equals to MC and the profit depends again on the cost and the revenue. It depends on the profit dif product differentiation because we are saying that there these are close substitutes the products are close substitutes. So, there are and we are saying there are no restrictions to entry and exit easy entry and easy exit from the market. So, that again affects the profit condition in of the seller. So, because of that this kind of situation there can be losses as well there can be profits as well. So, for that profit maximization what what, what else depends is differentiation and the advertising expenditure. There is a new way we can say now the players the rivals they do not indulge into price wars they indulge into non price wars. What are non price wars? Non price wars are that they they, they uh, are engaged in counters or the actions or counter actions in the form of advertising they change their advertising they go for innovations, but again it adds cost and it increases the cost of the seller and that has impact on its profit. How the demand curve of monopolistic seller is? It is negative. Why it is negative? Because we have earlier said that the demand is highly elastic. It means he can reduce the price and he can sell more. He can raise the price and can retain some of the customers who, who are the customers which he can retain which are the loyal customers because he is providing something extra some extra features he is providing and that is why some customers may be liking his product and they are the loyal customers. The demand curve of a firm is highly price elastic and it is flatter than monopoly this is the difference uh, between demand curve of monopolistic seller and a monopolist seller. AR curve is the demand curve. This, this rule is same for every kind of competition. MR curve lies below the AR curve. The slope of MR curve is twice of AR curve. This is similar to monopoly. These things are similar to these are similar to monopoly what we have discussed in monopoly. These are also similar to monopoly. But this is different than the monopoly and that is why the price uh, determination the out output determination becomes different here in the monopolistic competition. So, how the demand curve would be? Demand curve is falling 
downwards and what would be the AR, AR revenue? It will be equals to the demand curve and what will be the MR? MR would lie below the AR, the slope of MR would be twice of the AR. This we have discussed in this particular slide, this is the conclusion of this slide. So, how the price and output is determined by the monopolistic seller in the, in the monopolistic competition in the short run. So, first we are discussing the short run. Again, what is short run? Short run is the situation where seller can adjust the output, but cannot increase the scale of operation. It means, it is a situation where new, no new player can enter the industry, no existing player can leave the industry. What they can do is, they can only adjust their output, they may increase, they may decrease their volume which they want to sell in the, uh, in the market. So, there can be three kinds of possibilities, three possibilities can be, there can be economic profits, there can be normal profits and there can be economic losses. If these are the situations, then the different types of profits would be available to the seller. So, let us see how it works under the short run. So, what we have said earlier, if we want to depict that on the curve, here is the price, here is the cost, here is the revenue on y axis, here is the quantity on x axis and how is the average revenue? It is falling downwards and how is the marginal revenue? It is below the AR curve and how is the demand? Demand is equals to AR. Now, the question is key, what should be the optimum output? How much quantity he should sell and at what price he should sell? So, for determining that, he should know what is his cost. So, again he has to find a situation where MR is equals to MC. For finding that situation, if suppose it this is his average cost and this is his marginal cost. So, where the optimum output is determined at point E. So, from point E, if we draw the ordinate to x axis, we will get the optimum output which is called as OQ. So, what is the optimum? Now, the first question we have two questions actually, what is the optimum quantity which he should sell and at what price he should sell, because there are large number of sellers in the market. So, first question answer, uh, the answer to this question we have answered with the help of this MR is equals to MC and we get to know that this is the optimum quantity which is equals to OQ, he should sell the quantity which is equals to OQ. Now, at what price? So, now, drawing this ordinate to AR curve, it means he should sell at a price equals to OP. So, what is the optimum price? It is equals to OP is the optimum price. Now, we want to know how much or what kind of profits are there to the seller. So, to understand this, we denote two points M and N and we need to compare two things AR and AC. What is average revenue? Average revenue I am denoting by a green line, green line that is equals to that is equals to M Q. What is average cost? Average cost I am denoting by a blue line, it is equals to average cost is equals to N Q. So, now you can see the difference. What is the profit? Profit is average revenue minus average cost. So, M n is the profit. So, what is the profit? What is the formula to calculate profit? Profit is equals to A R minus A C into quantity sold into quantity sold. So, if I am denoting this profit by suppose orange color. So, this is the profit per unit and how much would be the total profit? Profit per unit m n into quantity sold. What is the quantity sold which we have calculated earlier? It was O q, O q is the quantity sold. So, if we draw a parallel line from n to 
this uh, y axis and denote this by suppose uh, denote this by t if we denote this by t. So, this area would be the profit area for the monopolistic seller. So, this is how he has identified the seller has identified that what is the optimum output and at what price I should sell and he would have the supernormal profit. Now, if I ask you is it necessary that he would be having only profits? No, it is not necessary. Why? Again, because if the average cost is such that it is higher than the average revenue, agar average cost is lying above this line. So, there will be the losses, then there will not be the profits. If it is equal to average revenue, then there will be the only normal profits. So, it depends on the cost structure of the monopolistic seller that he would have profits, losses or economic profits in the short run. So, in the short run what kind of profits he can have? He can have normal profits, he can have super normal profits or he can have the losses. So, these can be the possibilities for the seller in the short run. Okay? So, this we have concluded under the short run. So, let us move to the long run. So, under the long run what happens is as I have said monopolistic combina com competition is a combination of two things monopoly and mono this perfect competition. If you see this, this resembles to monopoly. So, pricing and output determination in the short run resembles to monopoly, but under long run it resembles to perfect competition. We, we, here I have written also that it is similar to the perfect competition. How it is similar? Because when there are supernormal profits in the market, as there are no barriers to entry and exit, new players will come into the picture, the supply will reduce, the average revenue will reduce, the profit will convert into losses may be and because of the losses some players will leave the industry, supply will again increase and there will be equilibrium where average revenue and average uh, cost will be equal and there will be only normal profit. So, this is how and this this is what happens in the long run. So, let us do this by a graph as well. Again here is a price cost and revenue and here is a quantity and this was the average revenue, earlier it was the average revenue and it was the marginal revenue of the seller MR 1 and suppose this is the, this is the long run average cost and this is the long run marginal cost of the seller. So, what happens is that when new players enter the industry, when new players enter the industry, the demand curve will shift. So, average revenue will also shift. So, now the demand curve will become more elastic. Why? Because new players have entered and they are charging lesser prices and when they are providing the same product at lesser prices, what will happen? The demand of the existing seller would reduce. The quantity which he was selling earlier, it will now fall down and that is why his demand curve will be will be more elastic. When we say it is more elastic, it means it will become flatter, it will become flatter and this as I have said the demand has reduced. So, it will it will reduce and it will shift to the lower side and it will shift to such extent that it will become it will pass tangentially to the long run average cost. No, so, now new average revenue will be indicated by AR 2, AR 2 is the new demand curve which is now more elastic. It is now more elastic why? Because new players have entered the industry and as the AR changes, MR will also changes and now the new MR 
will be indicated by M R 2. So, this new M R 2 where is the interaction of marginal revenue and marginal rev cost? It is the point E. So, drawing the ordinate to x axis from point E, we will have the optimum output O Q. And for selling the optimum output, if we can, we can see this is the M Q is the average revenue and M Q is also the average cost. It is the average revenue as well as the average cost. And at what price he should be selling? At price O P. So, what are the answers to our questions? First question was what was the optimum quantity? So, we have identified optimum quantity is equals to O Q. What is the price? Optimum price? Optimum price we have identified equals to O P. At the, this, it means if selling this quantity O Q at price O P, what is the profit? What is the type of profit available to the seller? So, here we have to compare average revenue and average cost and we come to know that average revenue is equals to average cost. It means that there are only normal profits. Why there are only normal profits? Because super normal profits have attracted new firms and then the revenues have decreased, the demand curve has shifted, it has reduced, the demand of the existing players have reduced, their, uh, their uh, uh, revenues have reduced and that is why they are in the long run there are only normal profit. So, there we have find out that there are only normal profits for the monopolistic seller in the long run. This is the conclusion which we have identified here. So, if I ask you what is the what is the uh, type of profit available to the seller in the monopolistic competition in the long run the answer is only only normal profit. Now, why there are only normal profits again because of this change which we have already discussed. Then there is a term associated which we are talking about is product differentiation and product differentiation means that the seller is providing some extra feature in the generic product in the same generic product which other sellers are selling some sellers are providing something extra and that something extra we are saying kind of different features unique features and it can be in the form of price it can be in the form of packaging advertising or something related to the product it can be real it can be imaginary it can be perceived by the consumer it can be only in the minds of the consumer that the product is differentiated in real sense it, it is similar but but it is in the mind of the consumer that they think that it is differentiated that is called as the product differentiation product differentiation is not only employed by monopolistic seller it is also employ it can also be employed by a oligopolistic seller in the oligopoly industry as well so, what is this process? It is the process of distinguishing an offering from others in the market. It means distinguishing the product, the seller's product with the rival's product. How it is distinguishing? With the help of making minor changes in the same generic product by which sellers can charge different prices. For example, companies sell different type of same generic product of toothpaste or soap this is also an example of product differentiation. It can be real, real means there is real differentiation which already ex which actually exist or it can be perceived. It means it is not there, but it is only in the minds of the consumer because of the branding of the product. Like we when we taste Coca Cola and Pepsi, they, they, they the color is similar, the taste is similar but it is different in the minds of the consumer only. So, a, dif a differentiated product enjoys some degree of uniqueness in the mindset of the consumers, it can be real or it can be imaginary. Then question is why product differentiation? Obviously, it is very obvious when the product is differentiated, the consumer would able to different to relate to identify different and this gives a reason for him to purchase. Why he is going to purchase? When all the products are similar, he can go to seller 
ones, two, three, or n number of sellers in the market. So, why he is going to purchase your product? Because of the uniqueness the seller is providing to him, and that becomes the advantage of the product differentiation. But in monopolistic competition, it is especially beneficial for the seller. Why? Because there are large number of sellers and they are selling a same product, same product which is having close substitutes. So, how you want to differentiate yourself? If there are n number of sellers in the market, there is no difference in the product, then there will be no competitive advantage, there will be no chances of long term survival in the market. That is why uh, that it should be there in the monopolistic competition. So, let us discuss the advantages point wise to create that competitive advantage which we are uh, talking about to ensure a unique selling proposition of the product. It is a marketing stra strategy actually, the product differentiation is a kind of marketing uh, strategy. It gives the customers a reason to purchase the brand's product and repeat the purchase. It creates brand loyalty. Now, as we have discussed all the uh, competitions perfect monopolistic and monopoly, it is time to differentiate them because students I can understand at this point of time you may be thinking that perfect monopoly and monopolistic they th these three things are looking very very similar. So, let us now differentiate them. There are the basis on the number of on the basis of number of sellers product control over price barriers to entry and exit demand curve and knowledge. So, moving from this to this side under perfect competition very large number of sellers are there monopolistic large and monopoly there is only one. How the product is under perfect competition it is homogeneous here it is heterogeneous means differentiated and here it is unique unique means no close substitute. Here the seller has no control over price he got some control why because of the differentiation which he is providing in the product. Here he has full control again why because he is the only one in the market there are no barriers to entry and exit there are some barriers only a minimal this is restricted no, no new player can enter. Demand curve is perfectly elastic perfectly elastic means it is parallel to the x axis demand curve is highly elastic slope is higher it is flatter demand curve is inelastic it is steeper knowledge perfect competition under this the sellers and buyers have perfect knowledge here they have less than perfect knowledge and they here they have imperfect knowledge of the market. So, this is what we have discussed today thank you students for patiently listening ha have a nice day happy learning and stay safe. Thank you.